it's Summer Julie here. I've been traveling with Hacker Paradise for a little while now and when I was initially doing research on Hacker Paradise I had some challenges finding things from talking heads or just people with names that could be held accountable so I thought that since I've been doing this for a little while I could provide a little bit of information for people who are either researching or just curious about the concept of remote co-living arrangements. What is Hacker Paradise? What is the program? What does it offer? Who is Hacker Paradise? In its own words, Hacker Paradise is a community of professionals that combine work with travel. HP is a company that arranges remote working, travel, and living accommodations and experiences in various parts of the world. The company's structure is a network of trip facilitators, two per trip at the very least, the tech team and the logistics coordinators. You bring your own job, Hacker Paradise provides the housing, co-working, and networking experiences. And every couple of months, the destinations change. As a participant, you go to the website, you see where Hacker Paradise is going to be when, and you can come up with your own schedule and book on a weekly basis between as many destinations as you prefer. The Hacker Paradise program is that there are facilitators in destinations. You say, hey, I would like to be at that destination for two, four, six, eight weeks. You get there, they give you a place to stay, they give you a co-working space, they give you a SIM card, and this is good for people that are digital nomads. It's the term of people who travel and the only thing that they need is Wi-Fi in order to do their jobs. I am a remote worker and this program does something that's very valuable to me which is provides Wi-Fi so I can work. Before I really dig into like an analysis of costs and benefits of Hacker Paradise, I want to give a little bit of a background so you know who this person is and what the context to which that they are judging this experience. I grew up in a very travel-friendly household. I have a family of travelers. My dad travels a lot for work. My One of my brothers lived in Spain for a while and has lived all over. There's been very few times in my adult life that every one of my family members is on the same continent. And when we are, I'm like, Peace out, I'm gonna go to South America for a little while. Uh, my family had a foreign exchange student when I was in high school and I studied abroad in college. So I am a person who likes to travel and is very fond of multicultural experiences. I was a remote worker for a year before I joined up with Hacker Paradise, but I was only doing solo small trips. I was doing road trips around the Midwest, I love the Midwest, and I did a big trip to Seattle and Vancouver by myself. I'm a person who's not a stranger to getting on an airplane and going to a new country alone. My experiences with Hacker Paradise so far, I spent two weeks in Uruguay in December. I'm doing eight weeks in Medellin. I'm quite a few weeks into that right now. And at the end of this trip, I'm going to Rio de Janeiro with Hacker Paradise for Carnival. Now let's talk about my Hacker Paradise experience. I'm going to start it back at the interview. When you apply for Hacker Paradise, you have to interview in order to be accepted on trip just to vet the participants, make sure everybody has the same culture fit, has the same expectations. And at the end of my interview, I asked the CEO, Spencer, what didn't I ask that people usually ask? And he told me that people usually ask about the community, the other trip mates, your co-participants. And as a solo traveler, I didn't even think to ask of that because I am a very independent solo person. I didn't really anticipate spending very much time with my trip mates. Fast forward to my first day on trip. I landed around 6 a.m. I get to Montevideo. I have a person from another participant, a trip mate, who was on my same flight. So we check into the apartments and our facilitator is there and she says, okay, let's go get breakfast. A lot of the group is gonna come meet us. And much to my surprise, I ended up meeting five or six of our trip mates on that day. It totally blew my mind. I had no idea that I would 
see these people as much as I ended up seeing them. It was a great sense of community. It was the last two weeks of the trip, so everybody was excited to have like fresh faces around. And I didn't expect this thing that turned out to be like one of my favorite aspects, one of the greatest strengths of Hacker Paradise, the community. Now, fast forward, I am on my second Hacker Paradise trek, and I was only supposed to be here for four weeks. But I landed in Colombia, I looked around, I felt that beautiful eternal spring, and I said to myself, uh-uh, I need four more weeks. So I extended to eight weeks. We have the world's most interesting and exciting co-working space. I'm developing very close relationships with the people that I'm here with. And we've gone on two trips to Guatape at like the most amazing accommodations. I'm loving trip number two. Trip number one was great. Trip number two has been fantastic. I absolutely love Colombia. I love Medellin. And since I've been here, I've gotten such a better context for how other remote workers work, what their life balance is like. And I've been learning from different fields of experience, seeing software developers and salespeople and recruiters and how they manage their work-life balance. And that has honestly made me a better remote worker. So altogether, my Hacker Paradise experience has been so overwhelmingly positive. Okay, so the topic that I really wanted to cover in this is like the price point, is it a scam, blah, blah, blah. So let's talk about the Hacker Paradise price point. So you book your own schedule, right? Like it's on a weekly basis. You do two weeks, you do three weeks, you do six weeks. Some of the trips are $100 USD more than I'm about to explain. You definitely want to look at the website. Just some of the places are in like Europe or something. And yeah, Europe's more expensive. Just, just saying it how it is. So we're going to start with an example of Kalanta, Thailand. And so it's $525 a week for four weeks. Housing is included, co-working space is included, networking is included. That includes a Monday lunch and a potluck and goals and all kinds of program offerings to grow your sense of community with the group. And then there's a discounted rate for alumni. The whole point of going over the pricing is that one of the criticisms that I read and also hear about Hacker Paradise is the pricing. It's an expensive program. Like, is it a ripoff? So I regularly heard that and I do have a response for you. It's true that you can book housing and co-working cheaper than with Hacker Paradise. It's also true that it's very hard to have a sense of community and find good people to be around anywhere. In my eyes, the major selling points of Hacker Paradise are the facilitators who are kind of life fixers. If you're in a new country and you don't know how to do something, you need help, you need support, that's what the facilitators are there for. And community to travel and coordinate events with like, I don't know how to tell you this, but sometimes it's actually easier to do something with a group of six than it is to do solo. And sometimes you want to do something, but it would just be better to have a friend to do it with. What better group is there to travel with than a group of travelers who's there for the same amount of time as you? Now, those things might not appeal to you. And you may still be saying to yourself, it's still way too expensive. And you know what? It's fine if it's not the solution for you. That doesn't mean it's a ripoff, though. It doesn't mean it's a scam. It means that there are different programs for different types of people, and there are plenty of people who see this as a very good solution. Some people want to travel, but they don't want to deal with the logistics. That's kind of what Hacker Paradise is for. You have to book your own flight, right? But that also means that you're responsible for your own flight and you could book whatever kind of flight accommodations you want to get there. And it also means you can go wherever you want after because the whole thing is that Hacker Paradise provides you with your experience while you're at the destination with them. 
I think that Hacker Paradise is great for the kind of traveler who really just wants to focus on work and being with people who are same-minded. And I think a lot of experienced travelers or perhaps thrifty travelers might see a benefit in doing their own thing. That being said, a lot of experienced travelers come on Hacker Paradise. You know, there's lots of people I've met that are 13 months into their year of travel. I know it's a little bit more than a year at that point. And they realized how hard it is to make friends and they wanted to try something new. And Hacker Paradise is a great solution for them. So I just wanted to say that is it a ripoff? If you're a remote worker, the community can make all the difference. I was working at home. I had a co-working space I hardly went to. I would go a week and only ever talk to service workers, essentially. I would go days without talking to anybody face-to-face. -face. And Hacker Paradise is an incredible solution to the problems that I was facing in my life. Now, I recognize that if I say that community is the selling point, that we need to give a little bit more context about what the peer group looks like. So demographics. The community is mostly American from the United States, but I would say it's about like, I don't know, 65% are American and the rest are, eh, you know, like quite a few North Americans, but also some Europeans, people who want to travel and get out there. It's mostly ages 24 through 60, which I know is a huge range, but I would say the average age from my experience is in the mid 30s. Now, the outlier to that. So the first half of this trip, uh, the first four weeks of Medellin, would had like maybe an average age of 28. So it was very young spirited. It was, uh, it was very interesting. I loved every moment of it. And now we have an older group, which is fantastic. It means all walks of life are here. And there's a lot of learning and sharing about careers and life. As far as careers, I know it's called Hacker Paradise, but that doesn't mean it's all techies. It is mostly tech careers, though. I work in digital marketing, and I'm not the only digital marketer that I've met out here. Some people come on partial vacation or in gap time between jobs, but you must have something to work on in order to come on trip. There's nobody just, like, letting loose and being crazy. You have to have at least something that you're focusing on while you're here or else you're not invited essentially. The types of people are travel spirited who want to see and experience the world. There's a spirit of adventure for trying new things which is great for if you're in Colombia and you want to learn how to like, I don't know, salsa. There's always somebody who wants to take salsa lessons with you. And there's a mix of newbies and experienced travelers. It would have been a huge red flag for me if I would have come on my first trip and there was nobody who had ever been traveling before, right? If it was all newbies, that would be a red flag. But I got on trip and there were people who had been traveling with Hacker Paradise for a long time and also people who had been traveling solo for a long time. That's a good mix that shows you that there is a benefit to the program even for experienced travelers. And it's not just for newbies. I appreciate it a whole lot. There is a little bit of like a computer science lean to the program. I mean, it is called Hacker Paradise. And just a little bit of context for that, like, yeah, I was in a sorority in college, but I also run a YouTube channel about Neopets.com. It's this one. Look at my library. <laughs> so basically, the whole like computer science leaning thing wasn't a deal maker or a deal breaker, but it appealed to me, and when I was comparing the different programs that were similar, it was definitely something I kept in mind. So let's talk about the different programs that I could have considered that were like Hacker Paradise. So the very first one that started hitting me up on the Instagram was Remote Year. This is how I learned about the very concept of remote working groups. They marketed to me aggressively, and so I started looking into the reviews, and I didn't like what I was hearing. I didn't like the pricing. I didn't like the way that the destinations worked. I was like, okay, maybe Remote Year is not for Julie, but this company exists. There's got to be competitors. 
So I found Hacker Paradise from there. And I liked the program locations, the subscription model, and I liked the branding a whole lot. The other ones are We Roam, which just folded in December, like Lo Siento. If you were part of that, holy heck, I'm so sorry to hear about that. It's not a thing. I didn't hear about it until after I got involved with Hacker Paradise, and it's just like, mm, not, not a thing anymore. And then there's also Wi-Fi Tribe, which is similar to Hacker Paradise. Uh, just the name kind of rubs me the wrong way. There was like a small period of time where I was like, maybe I should look into Wi-Fi Tribe. Uh, there are people on trip who have been on Wi-Fi Tribe and also somebody who's been on We Roam. So like, if that shows you, it's competitive with those programs. Uh, some of the other programs, I believe Remote Year and Wi-Fi Tribe are currently in Medellin. Like, this is a destination to attend. Hacker Paradise is doing the smart location things. They get it, right? So um, I picked Hacker Paradise because I liked the way that the program worked. And it spoke to me as a person who has values that are aligned with the program. Now that that's all said, the one remaining factor that's kind of a big tell is, will I sign up for more Hacker Paradise trips? So I'm at the midpoint of my Hacker Paradise itinerary. And at this point, the world is my oyster. So I'm on my second trip, I have a third trip lined up, and if you put it like on a calendar, I'm like at the exact midpoint here. I don't have any plans to continue with Hacker Paradise in the near future. I'm a person who has an apartment, a cat, a car, family, friends, and the summer's coming up, right? Like it's almost springtime. So right now I don't have plans to continue. I might do like a little solo travel thing later this year. Hacker Paradise equipped me with a lot of travel confidence and know-how. I'm definitely considering it if I, you know, spread my wings to the more exotic locations. I'm local to Eastern Standard Time for my work, so that's really the big challenge for me when deciding where to go. I need more support in places like Asia than places like South America. I'm taking Spanish lessons here, and to tell you the truth, I'm very confident in my ability to get around and make South America work for me. And I'm only this level of confident because I've done two Hacker Paradise trips in South America. So for... South America, who knows, maybe I would do like some time with Hacker Paradise in the future. I'm just not planning on it right now. And if I did go to Asia, yeah, I would definitely need their support because I ain't never been to Asia. Like they could definitely help me get my little training wheels. I recommend the program, especially if you're looking into digital nomad programs, you gotta start somewhere, you gotta get out there. And I think Hacker Paradise has a great setup, the way that it works. I think the pricing is very competitive. I think the offering is very competitive. So in conclusion, I am actively on trip right now, posting about it daily on my Instagram. I'm on Twitter all the time, at Bonkish. At me if you have questions, leave them in the comments. Not only am I happy to answer them, but I'm spending time on the daily with the facilitators. One of the facilitators has become one of my closest friends in my life, so I'm going to ask her if you ask me something that I can't answer. But I would be more than happy to make more videos explaining what's going on, especially if they're good questions. Like, I want to talk about this cool thing that I'm doing, and I want more people to know about it. The only thing I ask for is if this was helpful to you at all, and you're like, that woman did it. She gave me what I needed to sign up for trip then you gotta tell them that Petsum or Julie, they know who I am, Julie helped you arrive at that conclusion. It would help me out a lot and it would let them know that, hey, this Julie person, she's like pretty great. They already know that. They already know that I'm pretty great, but it would be cool if you would let them know that I was the person who helped you arrive at your conclusion. It would be a huge solid. I'm going to be responding to comments on this video if you have questions. I honestly just want to answer what I can about this. When I was doing research about coming on trip, I had very few reviews with a person's face and name associated with it that you could hold accountable. I'm a person you could hold accountable for this. Like, 
my Twitter and my Instagram is very related to who I am as a person. And I'm more than happy to answer what I can truthfully about this program because I like it so much. I don't have plans for trips. Like, I'm not signed up for anything, but I'm probably going to do Hacker Paradise again. And I'm more than happy to share with you what I know about it. All right, cool. Thanks. I appreciate you watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You do something ironically, you're still doing it. Just saying. All right, adios. Bye.